Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa, I read, and welcome to another video. And today I'm reviewing all the books I read in the month of September. So this is my reading wrap up, and I've read a total of six books, which I'm pretty happy with because my reading's been strange this year, so I'm just happy that I got six read. I wasn't really keeping track, really. So I'm very happy that I've read that much. They're all exclusively romance. Almost all of them are adult. I only have one YA book to talk about. Also, they're all four or five stars, which is amazing. But also because I don't read books that I'm not enjoying. Like I just don't do that. So if a book's not working for me, um, I usually don't continue. Sometimes a three star just happens near the end of the book. So don't be surprised that these are highly rated. It's because of that I just don't bother with books I'm not interested in. So let's just get on with the reviews. So the first book that I read this month was The Duke I Once Knew by Olivia Drake. I gave this five stars. It was more like 4.5, but it was still really good. I listened to this on audiobook, but this is a historical romance. It's a second chance romance. It's between Abigail and Maxwell, but Abigail, she's a bit of a spinster, which is one of my favorites when it comes to historicals because the women are just like so much stronger and just so headstrong, I guess, or just, I don't know. I love a woman in historical romance who just follows her own path and doesn't necessarily follow societal norms. But anyways, um, we follow Ab Abigail and she's a spinster and it's mostly because her parents were a lot older. She's like the youngest out of her siblings and her siblings are a lot older than her and so because of it she's always been kind of an afterthought and she had to take care of them in their age and now that they have both passed her siblings are kind of fighting over her because she she's not married she's been a caretaker basically for her parents now her siblings want her for like watching their kids or helping get her niece or yeah her niece out into society and things like that and you know, she just like comes to the conclusion of like, I want to make my own choice in life. And she takes this job as a governess at a neighboring estate. And the job is working for Maxwell, who's the Duke, Duke of Maxwell. I don't know. I think Maxwell is his first name, but he's a Duke at this estate. And it's for his sister, his younger sister. Um, she needs a governess. So the romance is between Abigail and Maxwell and they've had a past. They were kind of engaged, but there was a misunderstanding and things didn't work out. And so they haven't talked to each other ever since. He has been a rake his entire life since then. And it is their romance and I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it 4.5 stars. I do recommend it. I listened, to, I listened to it on audiobook and I enjoyed that experience. It was a little bit longer. It was like 12 hours, which felt quite long but I did really love it, so I do recommend. The next one I have is The Beholder by Anna Bright. This is my YA book, and this was a huge surprise, mostly because I've heard like not great things about it, I guess, but I thought it was like so much fun. Like if you're a romance reader and you like reading YA, I definitely recommend it. Our heroine, she falls in love with multiple people, which I just like had the funnest time with. Um, it sounds strange, but we follow um, Sayla and she is a princess at her kingdom. Her father is ailing. He's not doing well. He's really sick. And she's anticipated picking a husband from her kingdom and she was hoping to marry one of his, her close friends. Um, she's always had a crush on him and she was kind of hoping that they would get betrothed and get married and she can't think of anyone else to marry. But unexpectedly at this party where she was supposed to like ask for his hand and she went through like the right channels like she asked her father to kind of set it up kind of thing and her advisors or whatever and it just didn't work out he rejected her and she doesn't understand why and then her stepmother who's evil i guess you can say um sends her on a tour to find a husband because she can get one from her house or from her kingdom so she agrees to do this even though her father is ailing and not doing well and she's like suspicious of her stepmother but she doesn't feel like she 
has much of a voice at her kingdom, which makes sense to me because as a woman, sometimes you don't. And not just that, but a princess and technically your father's in charge. But, you know, there's a lot of like dynamics happening. And I think that's one of the criticisms. And I don't know, I just really fell for Sayla. It kind of made sense to me. Not every woman is strong enough to voice their opinions right away. Sometimes you have to grow in a novel, which happens in here for Sayla. And either way, she goes on this tour and she goes to two places. She goes to England and she has like a romantic encounter situation with one. And then after that, she goes to another and she kind of falls in love with a the guy there. And the way she falls in love with these people and falls out of love just like makes sense to me. I don't know why it just really worked. It sounds weird and silly, but like believable in my mind. So I really enjoyed this. I thought it was a lot of fun. It did end on like a cliffhanger kind of as a duology. So technically you would need to read the second book in order to get a final conclusion to the story. Um, I haven't gone to it. I'm not sure if I will or not it's not like I don't want to I just I don't know I feel like I have other priorities right now if you think I should read the second one let me know um and then I can make it a priority but anyways yeah I really loved it I gave it five stars I had a great time reading it, it was so much fun and I listened to that one on audiobook too which I don't necessarily recommend because there's a lot of characters anyways moving on <laughs> the next one I read was Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase this I got four stars. Again, it's another historical romance. And the characters in here are Jessica and Sebastian. And Sebastian is a rake. And not just any rake, but a scoundrel, I guess. Which means he's the rakish of the rakish. I don't know. <laughs> but it's set in Paris. And um, she goes to Paris with her grandmother to kind of stop her brother from making a fool of himself. I guess you can say... Her brother has been following the wrong crowd. He's been doing rakish behavior as well and spending a lot of money and just not being careful. And Jessica, Jessica is concerned for him. And so her and her grandmother go to Paris to confront him and try to take him away from his influences, one of which is Sebastian. And Sebastian, like I said, is a rake. And so he's been kind of like manipulating um, Jessica's brother Jessica's brother is not like the smartest of men and it's just really gullible a little bit. They're not always kind about him. They call him stupid a lot and things like that. And this is definitely like an older romance. So certain ways of talking about people aren't like the best in here. But I did really like this one. I liked how Jessica really stood up to Sebastian because... Sebastian is like definitely gruff, definitely like in your face kind of guy and she just doesn't put up with it which I always love that kind of dynamic and sh he almost ruins her reputation and she just like really stands up to him. I loved everything about this until like kind of like the last third where there's this story plot point that's just kind of thrown in there and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Um, but overall, I did really enjoy this book and I can see why people love it. And I do definitely love Jessica and Sebastian um, as a couple, even though I did find some things frustrating. So I still recommend it. It's a classic. So maybe pick it up if you're interested. The next one I read that I really loved is From Duke Till Dawn by Eva Lee. This one, we're following Cassandra and then the Duke of Greyland. I don't know what his first name was, but I really enjoy this one because it's set kind of like the underground of London because Cassandra, she is a trickster. No, she manipulates people and tricks people into giving her money. She like is a schemer, I guess you can say, or a lot. <laughs> What's the word? She's like a thief, right? So she pretends to be a widow who is on hard times and somehow tricks men into giving her funds in order, and that's her way of making money. She's not married and she has no prospects. She isn't a lady of society. She is someone just like on her own and she this is the way she can make money and a way to um, provide for herself without having to do extremely hard labor and so this is her preferred way of making money. She was trained by someone when she was younger. He kind of took her under her under his wing and taught her how to scheme and trick people into giving her money and so she's kind of indebted to this man and so when he comes back into her life 
um, he convinces her to open a gaming hell or gaming den and she agrees to do it to do it as long as they do it by the books no illegal stuff she kind of wants to get away from this life but she thinks that by opening this den um, she'll be able to make enough money to live comfortably for the rest of her life so she agrees to do it unfortunately while she's working at this den she runs into the Duke of Greyland and they've had an encounter years past I don't know how long it was but they've had a night together she tricked him pretended to be a widow and you know she he was one of her marks i guess you could say but she was really intrigued by him they've had like extreme chemistry and they had they spent a night together and she's never forgotten it and, and neither has he and so they've had this connection he's pining over this woman that he met just once and once you know ever since can't seem to settle down and so they bump into each other at this gaming hell and he's surprised by it and she's still having to pretend that she is this widow long story short eventually obviously he finds out and he ends up helping her even though he is heartbroken and angry at her for lying to him about who she is but the partner that she worked with betrays her and people who financed this gaming hell are now after her and so it is their story i really loved it i love the underbelly of london kind of thing um i always love reading that kind of angle when it comes to his historical romance so i definitely enjoy this one um i definitely felt the angst between the two characters the will they won't they um it's definitely stronger when it comes to the class dynamics because he's a duke and she's not she's not a lady at all and so i definitely recommend if you're looking for a historical romance the last two are written by the same author um and they're part of a series the first one is tonight and forever by brenda jackson um this is part of the Med Medeiros family i think this is one of her longest romance series that she has it, they are contemporary but they're written in like the 90s like they're old <laughs> uh romances um and tonight forever i think is her first one that she wrote um i think ever maybe don't quote me on that but anyways this one will follow lauren and justin and lauren is recovering from a very hard divorce she um, married a man who um, emotionally abused her and verbally abused her she he was not good to her at all and it's really um hurt her obviously emotionally um and it's it, since it was such a messy divorce she doesn't plan to be in any relationship at all and to kind of recover she decides to move back home she grew up in this town in texas i forget what it was called but she moves back because she has um kind of her family she actually grew up in the foster care system but there was this couple who took in a lot of kids into their home and fostered them and the foster mom and dad kind of became her family and she decides to move back closer to them and she has friends in the area and things like that so she moves back to this town and she meets Justin who is the hotshot doctor who's new in town he's been there only a year and they meet at her mother's or foster mother's party birthday party and they just like have an instant connection connection justin is just so intrigued by her and he hasn't felt that way about anyone before and he is a widower he has had a wonderful marriage but unfortunately his wife um got sick and died and so he hasn't had it he hasn't been in a serious relationship for a long time but there's just something about lauren and i just really loved this story about kind of like second chance love in a way um for each of them you know they've they've both been married before but finding love with each other again it was just like so beautiful to read there was kind of like a jealous ex situation in here you know she is divorced and everything so that was part of the narrative a bit and um justin is wants to be with her really bad but hesitant also because in a lot of ways he's still in love with his wife so there are dynamics like that but i did really enjoy it it's not long so if you're looking for a quick romance i definitely recommend it i do like um brenda jackson her writing um i've read a few things now by her and um they're like a solid story that's how i feel they're usually like a four star for me so anyways after that i picked up the second one called whispered promises 
And this one we're following Dex, who is Justin's brother. And this is an age gap, second chance romance. Dex was married to Caitlin, who's a lot younger, like nine years. 11 maybe but they had this whirlwind romance during a summer they like met and basically got married right away and it was just like a, like they just fell head over heels and were in love and so they got married but then when caitlin told her father he was not happy about it at all he was really upset by it and dex was going to be moving to australia he was going to move to australia almost like right away after they were going to get married and the plan was for her to go with him caitlin's father was not happy with this decision so caitlin really felt this pull between the two she felt like she couldn't leave her father um even though she wanted to be with dex and dex felt like she had a responsibility to move with him because she's his wife and so in the end caitlin decides to stay home with her father because she felt like she couldn't betray her father, which I can't understand. So many years later, I wanna say like five maybe, maybe it's like four, I don't remember, but many years later, Kaylin's father is dying. She had no idea that he was sick. He never told her, but um, on his deathbed, he requests her to contact Dex, to bring Dex to his bedside, and so she does. And he tells her that they never actually got divorced. They thought they did, but they didn't. And that they're still married and that they should try. And that's kind of like one of his last wishes is for them to continue to try to be together. It is their story. It's Second Chance Romance. And I did really enjoy this one as well. It's kind of a marriage of convenience because it doesn't talk about it in the synopsis, but it happens soon enough. But um, Caitlin does have a child and it's obviously Dex's child and she never told him but she did at the same time like she wrote to him but he never responded there's a lot of miscommunication when it comes to the two of them especially like in the past like they've missed each other a lot and so there's a lot of a lot of miscommunication at the front end of the relationship it's kind of like marriage convenience because he really wants to be with his daughter, obviously. And Caitlin kind of wants to make it work because of her daughter. So I do love romances like that where even though they do actually want to be together, they feel a little bit more compelled to be together because of something else. Um, in this case, Jordan. I did like how they finally figured things out and it was kind of like a... I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed this one as well. So I gave it four, four stars and I definitely recommend checking out Brennan Jackson. These are like Harlequin romances. So they're super short. They're not overly long and they're just like a nice story <laughs> to read. So I enjoy reading them. So that is the end of my wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have read any of these books before, please comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about them. Did you like them? Did you not like them? I would love to know. If you have any recommendations kind of similar to what I've read, like if you have any historical romances or contemporary romances or Harlequins, um, comment down below. I would love to see your recommendations. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you have not done so, you can follow me on Goodreads and Instagram. And you know what? I'm going to keep reading. Bye. Thank you.